Good evening, this is Kuro. Got a tier 10 game in my gearing. Going over the matchmaking threats to my ship. I've got an enemy Hakuryu. Double Des Moines Wooster. Uh, Hindenburg with its hydro on this map can be uh, a pain. Stalingrad and destroyer threats are Shema and Haragumo. So, right out of the gate, I spawn. <coughs> excuse me, I spawn in the middle of uh, the map Greece. It's three cap domination. And I'm going to head out towards A flank. I don't like uh, a lot of these little fights you have where you're just sitting in behind an island, uh, just contesting caps. I don't think that's a good place to be for a destroyer. So instead, I'm looking to uh, basically push out to one of the flanks and see if I can't help us um, win the west side flank and be able to use that against the enemy team. So as I'm pushing up, I'm already thinking about, you know, obviously, first priority, it's a CV match. Where's the CV flying? And he's flying right down the 1-2 uh, line. And that's giving me a pretty good idea of what's going on. It looks like he's going to drop the Smolensk. So, not going to have to worry about the CV for, uh, for the moment. Uh, I am pushing out here, and I am planning an initial uh, torpedo drop and I'm just gonna throw some random torpedoes out off this island here a lot of times you get ships that like to sit right here uh, to be able to shoot down in this direction in the sea and just want to try to deny that to the enemy uh, another option would be uh, pushing up in here and torping through B I don't really like this because uh, there is a CV in the match and there is quite a bit of radar in here so I'm just gonna limit uh, my initial torpedo volley to being pretty conservative you can see there's already uh, part of a smoke screen there and just gonna put it right off that island and right into the back side of that smoke you can see the Des Moines kinda sitting there you got a Stalingrad heading towards there as well as a Montana pushing in and at the same time, if the Haragumo tries to, to come out this way, I might catch him with those torps. So that's a, you know, a really nasty kind of spot where you can potentially catch a lot of different ships with your torps. Um, pushing up here, we do have a Wooster. I am expecting to get Engine radared here, activated. and I'm just planning on kiting away. Um, but I do want to keep this guy lit right now because he is just getting wrecked. And here, all I'm trying to do, I'm trying to bait the radar out. Um, I don't want to get too deep into the radar, but I want to bait it out because once it's out of the way, um, there's the Wooster, there's the Double Des Moines, there's the Stalingrad. This is the only thing that can detect me be Slope besides the DD and besides uh, the CV. Notice, uh, I'm not in a position where I can where I can contest or, or play any sort of games with the CV. I'm just instantly going to smoke up. Uh, it's it's not worth it to me to uh, try to play games or anything. Uh, I, you know, at this point, uh, I I'm even smoking up early to deny uh, the Wooster any sort of visual clue on the mini map that hey there's a DD there if the Wooster's not smart enough to uh, to realize that hey you know there's a DD there maybe I should radar uh, I'm not gonna help him I'm launching these torps more in here because there's a few ships hugging the island here uh, just trying to, to catch them if they decide to push off the island and I'm just looking around here see if there's anything I can shoot at in the smoke and then I just decide you know what not being helpful here it's time to push out and uh, see what I can spot and as I push out we've got the enemy hack coming through going ahead and uh, pop my AA try to help out my uh, my allies here focus in the AA just gonna stop briefly in the, uh, the smoke here Engine 
And here we go. I am going to take a shot because the Shima is detected. <coughs> and the Wooster goes on ahead and radars me. And I'm just going to tuck in, get safe. And uh, now that this radar is out of the way, it's going to open up some opportunities for me once this radar actually goes down. To note, I think the Wooster is trying to radar the Kerr first and not specifically me. Um, but regardless, it gets the radar out of the way. And that'll help make uh, things a little easier for me. Um, using this island against a Kerr first. Um, right now this Kerr first is spotted by my CV. So I'm just going to use this island. My team doesn't need spotting right now. They've got stuff spotted. So just going to add my DPM to the mix. Got my AA going already. I'm trying to help allies. Not getting very good fire RNG this game. And that's going to lead me to uh, start swapping ammo types. And this is something that I don't, I don't see a lot of people using AP frequently on, particularly the, the U.S. Navy destroyers. And I think it's a mistake. Um, I think that if, if you're confident in your aim, you can really make this, uh, that ammo type work for you. And I'm going to show you in uh, uh, upcoming engagement here in a minute. But just right here, just trying to put down this curve first. Finally get a fire there. Now, not all of that's bad fire RNG. I also kept shooting at a superstructure when uh, he had a fire on him, but still... Um, one fire out of all of those shell hits particularly early on when he wasn't on fire that was a little ridiculous especially for uh, a ship that I've got both fire flags mounted on this so looking at the situation here we've Engine got one activated. ship advantage uh, we've got one cap advantage so I can't go completely hog wild um, now, we just went two ships up, so uh, we do have a pretty significant point lead. It's going to let me play a little more aggressive. Um, and I'm, I'm starting to, to feel like this, this game's starting to shift uh, out of reach of the enemy. And I'm just going to play it a little cautious here, see if I get any sort of damage on this Haragumo. Then again, uh, engaging the Stalingrad. Stalingrad's popped his radar, so again, that's gonna open up some options for me uh, later on when uh, his radar is down. But right here, just uh, looking, seeing where his guns are pointed, trying to shoot him over this island, and frankly, doing a piss poor job of it. Uh, I need to be aiming much lower than that. Um, but at this point, pause it here. Take a look at the situation. I've done next to nothing. We definitely have a collapse starting. And I want to jump all over this snowball. And that means I, I'm going to need to be pretty aggressive and, and pretty quick about it. Or... I'm going to miss out my opportunity. So I do have torpedoes loaded here. But as fast as this Stalingrad is, with this island right here, I'm not going to be able to torp it. Now I've swapped to, to AP, and uh, I'm just going to go to work on this guy. Our team is taking the lead. Switching to the stern. His, notice how bright his stern is. Completely unsaturated. That's... Almost a 5k volley, 4k volley. 
you know, just, you can start to see it start to saturate, the damage starts tapering off, but I've already, you know, close to doubled my, my damage right in that engagement, that fast with my AP. You don't see, I don't see a lot of uh, US Navy destroyer players uh, making that switch to that ammo type. And it's unfortunate because the US Navy AP is pretty solid. Uh, even, at, even at longer ranges, um, you can, you know, plunge through the superstructure. Uh, you can plunge through decks uh, you know, obviously the lighter armored decks, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff in this game that you can pin with the, the AP. Again, wait until the last second. I know the CV is going to be going for me. It's a short squadron, but I don't really care because I want damage. And for whatever reason, the CV just circled away from me. That's, I, it's a misplay. I'm pretty sure this, this CV made some pretty significant misplays throughout the game without, you know, any real attempt to hit me. And here, just, just pushing up. I do have the Montana pushing in, and I'm watching the Montana on the mini map. Uh, Montana's getting ready to turn broadside, and that's telling me that he might be getting ready to shoot me. I, when I look at him, he's not even looking at me, so it's on. And notice, I'm switching to AP here. Uh, he's, you know, eight, nine kilometers out. I'm going to go on ahead and lay a smoke screen here. The ship is on fire. Problem solved, sir. Start to settle in and really dial in my shots on this Montana. Try to get that superstructure. And those torpedoes are just going to take care of business. Now, that ends the game, and, uh, you know, this game is, is, I'm picking this game mostly because, you know, it's been a while since I've gone over AP usage. Um, you take a look at it, and, and AP, even with the shatters and, and ricochets, um, it can it can do quite a bit extra DPM compared to to HE, as long as you are you know able to if you're using it correctly, and I do recommend uh, when at least when you get a new ship take that ship into the training room, hit the two key, and work out what the AP will pin, what it won't pin, the angles, uh, all of that. I do that with all my DDs, and I also do you know, refresher course, uh, periodically just to, if I know I'm going to be playing the ship seriously for clan battles or something like that, there might be an opportunity where, you know, that, <clears throat> that big volley with AP might come in handy and, uh, knowing what angles to pin or the point of aim, because like you noticed on the, the Stalingrad, he wasn't constantly broadside to me, but I kept working the angles on his stern, and that enabled me to, to keep using that AP uh, and netting much higher damage than I otherwise would have been able to with my HE. It's that sort of you know dynamic that you're working through with, uh, with your AP that you can uh, use to your advantage. And uh, that's why it's so important to go out and uh, hop in the training room and see, are there any, you know, odd surfaces on a particular ship that you're able to uh, to use your AP on? Uh, so anyway, going to go ahead and cut this one off. 
Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. I hope you're having a good night, and I will talk to you later.